Hi, I'm Ray, G4 and SJ. I'm going to talk to you about this. This is a common mode choke inside there that I've built. You're thinking, what on earth is that? It is hugely cop. No, it's not complicated. Who's that woman? Ignore her. Um, I'll have to turn her off in a minute. A couple of a plastic box, a couple of SO239 sockets, and you put that in line with your coax from your dipole, your nest of dipoles, whatever. Um, whatever you've got, whatever, this is HF, okay? And it does all sorts of interesting things. It's dead easy to make. I keep referring during the video to an article by uh, is it Steve Hunt. And I'm gonna put the link below this video, okay, to his, this article he's done, this PDF thing. And it is really interesting. So read that along with the video. Anyway, without further ado, here, as I say, there's bits of video I've taken from other videos, so you might think, oh, I've seen this before. You probably have parts of it anyway. But uh, I've put it all together to make, hopefully, what is something quite interesting. I've got an article here, High Performance Common Mode Chokes. Right, and there's a couple of... <laughs> Mine are not high performance, I don't think. That toroid, that core, I don't know what it is, I just found it. And we'll go into that later. Same with that one. I've got a box of these, and these were just experimental things. Now, before we go into this, this article, thanks Roy for sending me this, uh, the link to this. A friend of mine, Roy, sent it to me, and it explains things so well. Before we go on to the, the choke, I can't unfortunately stick the pictures up on the screen. There are all sorts of things here because of copyright. I'm not sure, you know, I don't want to get done for it. But this article is by Steve Hunt. There we are, G3TXQ, says at the top here. So presumably it's by him. What? Before we start looking at this, let's look at coax. Now he says here, you think of coax as a two core line don't you you've got the the inner and the outer all right so it's, it's two conductors isn't it he says here coax cable is in fact a three conductor line the third and independent conductor is the outside surface of the braid now you're thinking how can it be a three conductor line there's inner and outer there's only two as he explains in his article and i do urge you to have a look I'll put a link at the bottom of the video down there look I'll put a link when you pump RF up that there's what you call the skin effect so the RF travels on the outside there's the inner conductor right the center core travels on the outside of that all right the braid there's the braid there's the inner core in the middle there's the braid it travels on the inner surface of that braid in there Okay, that's the two conductors that we know about, right? It doesn't go through the braid to the outside. This is what he says, and he explains it very well. The third conductor is the outer surface of the braid. This is hard to grasp for anyone who is new to RF engineering. But the skin effect is a dependable fact, and so are all its con consequences. So it's a fact. So don't shoot me, I'm the messenger. <laughs> this, understanding that, all right, as he says also, you can put this through water, you can put it through metal, you can coil it up. You can do what you like with coax. Put it through a metal bulkhead or whatever. It doesn't have any effect on what's going on inside. Okay, that inside, as he's put somewhere, is like a, a private world, right? The inner of the braid and the, the inner surface of the braid and the surface of the inner conductor. That's where all the RF is. That's the, where you're sending a signal. What happens on the surface of the braid outside is totally different. Right, let's take an HF dipole, right? There it is, HF dipole for whatever, let's say 40 meters. There's your coax. I mean, you don't normally have plugs on it. There's your coax going up to the center of it. So it's a 40 metre dipole. It'll only work on 40 metres because you fed it with coax. If you want to feed it with open line feeder, it'll work on other frequencies and things. Right, that goes up. No choke, no baller, no, no stuff, no gubbins, right? Inner to one bit of the dipole, outer to the other bit of the dipole. What's going to happen? 
you're going to get these two elements of the dipole are radiating, aren't they? They're putting your signal out and you're working DX. Excellent. But what else is going to happen? RF will go up the inner surface of the braid and spill out over here. It'll spill out and come down here, down the outer surface of the braid. So you've got a leg there of the dipole and a leg there of the dipole and now a leg here of the dipole. You know with, with a dipole there's a centre dipole. What you want is the current peaking in the middle isn't it like that. That's the current. Voltage that in, voltage that in. High current in the middle because that's just the bit that radiates. Okay if you've got this radiating it can totally mess up that pattern. Um, so you've got to somehow stop the outer here becoming part of the aerial. Uh, it, it ends up, as Steve says in his article, you end up, it's not a dipole, it's a tripole, as he's put it, which is very good, I like that. You end up with a weird sort of tripole effort that uh, is not efficient at all. So that's where this comes in. Now, coiling this all round a toroid, right, doesn't affect what's going on inside because someone recently said to me if you do that and this greatly attenuates say 2 to 30 megs really attenuates everything you know like 30 40 db or more well you've lost your signal surely you know the the, the station you're trying to listen to you've attenuated his signal by kind of 40 db no because inside is like the private world. What's happening outside here doesn't affect that at all. So that whizzes round as it would do, unaffected by the outside. What this does, it affects the outer surface of the braid. So that presents a high, a very high impedance, perhaps a couple of thousand ohms or more, to any RF that's on the outside here. So it's can't, there's your aerial, there's your dipole, right? That is a really high impedance to any RF on the outside. So that is stopped there and then down down here. What's that? We're getting noises. Okay, do you see what I mean by that? I'm not very good at explaining this because as I said earlier, I'm not an RF engineer. And also, I even if I did understand the real in-depth mathematics and technicalities of all this, I don't think you'd want to hear that because I know a lot of you are, are newcomers, you're starting out, you know, you don't want me to go on about square roots, that, whatever they are, I don't know, square roots of something or other, flowers, <laughs> flower pot, uh, yeah, square, flower pot antennas probably have square roots, don't they? Anyway, moving on. So that's what that does. It basically takes RF off the outside of the coax. Okay, you know how people say, well, coil up coax, but, uh, where your dipole, is fed, coil up your coax like that to make a sort of choke thing, a, a ballon thing, an RF thing. Uh, apparently that doesn't work too well according to this and according to a load of other stuff I've read, so it's got to be true, it doesn't work too well. You know these clip-on uh, RF, well, I've got some, I've got a bag for you, know, they clip on, they work apparently, I've never tried it, but you'd have to have a whole row of them, you know, like there's your dipole. You'd have to have a whole row of them down here for them to begin to do any good at all. Um, you want something like this where it's coiled round and round and round. Now, these toroids here, these rings, I don't know where. I think they came from computer power supplies. I've no idea. I've got a box full. I don't know what they are. So it'd be interesting to see exactly what these do. I have ordered, and I'm hoping it will turn up today, I've ordered a, what is it, an FT240-31. And from what I understand, the dash 31 is the mix. Okay, it's the mix in here, what it's made of. You know, the amount of iron and stuff and gubbins they put in these to make them. Uh, the 31 and 43 mix, they're good for HF, okay? Just bear that in mind. I'm not talking about VHF at all in any of this. Because um, I'm a I'm an HF man, you know I like the old shortwave bands. Okay, it's turned up and I've wound that. The yeah, what was I saying about the measurement? 
Yeah, the 2.4 is the outside. So when it says it's an FT240-31, the 240 is 2.4 inches outside, okay? I've wound that, that there's a close photo of it. And uh, what I've done, as you can see by the photo, I've wound half of it one way, then half the other way. Can you see that? goes that way and then the other way so the two cancel out if you get RF voltages built up on here um, that will cancel out so uh, it did say in the article somewhere that, that he didn't really think it was necessary to do that but there we are doesn't make any difference does it I've ordered a box to put this in use a plastic box not metal because metal will muck it all up use a plastic box what is it eight turns in total uh, that's what I've read about this. So that seems to be about the best. You can add, it depends where you want to go on the HF band. Um, for example, if you're a, a, an LF type man, top band 80 meters round there, um, I think was it, yes, you, can add, you can alter the amount of turns. I've used RG8, by the way, the so-called Mini X, you know, the Mini X stuff. It does say to use that. I've tried to do it as per the book, if you like. Um, now they reckon up to 40 dB attenuation. I could probably change the amount of turns to increase it, as I said, on certain parts of the spectrum. Uh, I might do that at some stage because I am more interested in top band 80 and 40. Oh, and the 5 meg frequencies as well that we've got here in the UK. But I'm really pleased with that. You can put two together, stack them as they put it, stack them up. And, you know, then do it, or, and you really get some attenuation then. It depends how far you want to go, doesn't it? I mean, you know, where do you stop? Right, there it is in its box. Um, what I used to do with coax coming along into the house, I'd bury it in the ground. <laughs> okay, it gets eaten by slugs eventually or whatever, but um, I must turn that off. That, the ground, all the earth around the, the outer, that will get rid of any RF or anything on it. Uh, as you can take it through water. I mean, I wouldn't recommend running it through your garden pond, but that would work if you see what I mean. Um, right, the other thing is, so you've done that at the top where your dipole is up here. You've put your common mode choke thing up there, okay? Now, the wire coming down yeah, the, this side of the, the choke, this coming down here, all right, in, into your house, right along the garden, into your house, into the room, wherever, into your transceiver, that can act as an aerial, if, if you like, you know, that can pick up stuff, interference, and bring that in to the, the room where your radios are. So this, this is the one I made to go indoors. That you would put right at the back of your transceiver. So anything on the outside of the braid here, goes into here, then into your transceiver. It gets stopped. I know that when you bring your coax in, the outer, when you plug it to the back of your transceiver, screw it on there, the outer is grounded. But that will get rid of obviously a lot of the stuff on the outside, but it comes, it can radiate in the room. You see, if you've got it like coming across, hanging from the light and nailed to the wall. <laughs> anyway, so that's what that one's gonna be. That's gonna be, behind my transceiver next to the ATU or, or wherever. So yeah, it's good stuff, it's uh, it's worth doing. I haven't tried this properly yet. I'm hoping to, uh, I'm hoping it'll cut down interference, as I said, that's picked up on the outer of the braid as it goes past all sorts of things, interference, fluorescent lights and LED things and any, anything like that. So worth a go. Do read the article though. That's uh, if you're watching this, Steve. I don't suppose you will do, but congratulations on a fantastic article. It's really good. Right, that's it. Take care. I shall see you next time. Was it? They say good DX. Fine business, old man. <laughs> Cheers for now. Bye bye.